So here we complete the circle. We know about mistakes, how to deal with them, and how to improve. We know little examples of what doing this may look like in real life. But the question remains, how can we put this to use? Specifically, how do we use this stuff to make a significant difference to the world? There are many fields that are in dire need of good philosophy. Hard sciences get by by having a strong critical tradition, but most other fields are full of crap. Modern art, for example. <laughs> Environmentalism. Cryonics. Politics. There are already good people working on most of these. Sane arguments are known and are on the internet. We've made progress. <laughs> 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 we have we have made progress at, at persuading silly people, but there are some problems which virtually no one is working on who has good philosophy. The examples I gave are just ones where you don't necessarily have to make have to have brilliant epistemology to make progress in. You can use more parochial or different parts of philosophy and make progress in them. Fine. But there are a couple examples where good epistemology is a must. I'll go into a couple that have that still have unsolved problems. These are areas which we, you, me, Mars, can actually contribute to the growth of knowledge. To study human behavior, one must look into its causes, find explanations for why people do stuff. Psychologists don't seem to do this much. At most, they have local slash parochial explanations. They often attribute behavior to emotions or genes rather than people's ideas. They prefer to focus on what people do in practice by doing studies and try to predict how people will act based on these studies. They don't try to understand it much at all. So how can we improve psychology? First of all, we need more emphasis on explanation. What psychologists should be doing is completely changing their focus from what happens to be the case to why is this stuff the case or what must be the case given what we know. And we do know something. We already have a theory that explains a vast amount of human behavior. Humans. This should be referenced in all psychological inquiries. One major problem for psychology as a science is that human behavior depends entirely on the person's knowledge, or largely. Since the growth of knowledge is unpredictable, so is human behavior. This is historicism which offered debunk. So psychologists make the problem of the mistake of historicism. They think that if we just look at what has and stuff, and they can predict future things, but they don't know why. But psychology could look into how memes are propagated and what the current memes are. This would actually be useful. It does this to some extent implicitly. I'm just saying, um, mm -hmm. wouldn't looking into what the current memes are be basically like really very short lived because most good memes change? Well, memes don't change that much. I mean, yeah, most of them these days, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the point. They they are they are well, the entrenched ones anyway. Okay. Uh, the good ones are basically that's what science looks into. Don't, don't we already know what most of the entrenched means are? I don't think so. I think that we know very little about it. I think we know very little about, for example, okay, so what they are. Um, we don't know that much about like what all the girl memes are or what all the romance memes are. Like there are lots of things that we think. Oh, is this romance, or is this irrational, is this whatever? Because I mean, the entire body of human knowledge is mm. all the memes we know. Yeah, well, it? It, that, but those, there are also those are all the memes we, we hold, yes. rather than all the memes we know. That, there's a difference. There's a difference between having them in us and knowing them explicitly. Uh, okay. So psychologists already look into memes to some extent, but they don't understand memes, and they don't use memes the theory. So this is an entire field that's A, dominated by scientism, B, isn't trying to explain stuff, and C, we already have uh, 
we already have a good fundamental idea of why people behave as they do that no psychologist uses. Any one of us could revolutionize psychology by writing a book or a paper on memes. AI is a real unsolved problem in philosophy. Specifically, what is consciousness has no satisfactory answer. Epistemology is important in AI because AI is all about knowledge. A lot of people make mistakes regarding AI and epistemology and so on. For example, people think that learning happens uh, by a process other than conjectures and refutations. They make mistakes like not knowing that um, computation is universal. When I'm arguing with animal rights people, I often use the argument that animals are not significantly or fundamentally different from computers because neither of them have creativity. Computers and animals can follow their code, which includes specific actions, but may also include algorithms for working out what to do in a given situation. That's why some people think, oh, but my dog is learning because it can do this thing, uh, but actually that, that it's already coded into its thing. Um, humans, on the other hand, can create new explanations and ideas. Creating new explanations and ideas is exactly the same process as learning them. Animals can only know, uh, learn what their program tells them. Humans can learn anything. A proposed test for AI is the Turing test. It says, if it can fool a person into thinking it's human, then it is, well, pretty much. Some people object to this test because sometimes people get fooled by dumb chatbots. A better <laughs> test might be to measure creativity or ability to learn something. Or ability to learn anything, rather. Because if you just learn something, then that could be a genetic code. This goes back to the computation is universal because given that humans can learn anything, this is kind of like a, the fundamental difference between humans and animals' computers. Since there is only one known way to learn, AIs will learn in exactly the same way as us. This means that the first AIs will be akin to children. They won't start out as an adult human. Perhaps we could learn to understand the brain so well that we can program theories into it. Presumably we do this by starting with all of the theories of one person and then changing some. A major problem right now is that we don't know how theories are connected and internalized in a person's mind. Uh, this seems way off from what we could do in the medium near future because we just we really don't know this stuff that well. Um, for what it's worth, Dollhouse the TV show is a great program that explores these issues. We can't have stuff like intelligent cars that can learn because they would be human. Um, this, this, again, is a mistake that people think that when we have AI, we will be able to have like super smart you know, TVs and stuff that could learn to do but anything that actually has learning that isn't just following a program or an algorithm must be a universal learning uh, machine thing and so it must be human. Likewise, um, they won't necessarily be smarter than us. Their brain might run a bit faster, but intelligence is primarily about ideas. Ideas affect how we learn things, uh, how efficiently we learn things, our hang-ups, etc. There is an assumption that AIs wouldn't get hang-ups or irrationalities, but hang-ups are just ideas. They are indistinguishable from other ideas that are false, unless you have some detailed theory about what they are. A theory like that requires creativity. New hang-ups that come up may be adopted before you realize that they are hang-ups. Once we reject ideas like super-intelligent synthetic people or smart machines that can only apply creativity to one task, we will be in a much better position to solve the problems of AI. The Mars Society has the potential to make a profound his uh, historical impact. If we are determined, we can do more than even the Lunar Society. 
but we can only do this if we are actually working on problems. I hope I've illustrated that doing this is easier than one would have thought. We've already come a long way. We're standing on the shoulders of giants and we can see further than they can. There are many ideas that we could make progress in beyond what anyone else has done, simply by trying to solve the problems by applying good philosophy to them. Solving the AI slash consciousness problem has great potential. Once we do that, we'll be able to understand how our, mind, how our minds work better and do stuff like download ourselves to computers. Developments in psychology or meme theory could, form, uh, could formalize irrationalities, making it uh, easier to spot them and eliminate them. It could help create a second enlightenment. No doubt there are other fields that, with a little creativity and a lot of good philosophy, could flourish more than anything we could imagine today. This is it. We are among we are among the people with the best opportunity in the world to work on the most interesting problems man has ever faced. What are you waiting for? <laughs>